Well, good afternoon, everybody. Prynhawn da, Pawb, Croeso Cynnes, here uh, to the Facebook live stream tonight. Uh, thanks for joining us on Gospel Wales. Uh, my name's Hugh and I'm from Carmarthen and I'm going to speak to you from uh, the Bible. I just got three uh, short verses in mind tonight, three short verses, and it's about three things that God has written, three things that God has written Romans chapter 2 in the Bible tells us that people in this world show the work of the law written on their heart, the law written on their heart. So that's thing number one, God has written his law on our heart. Then we turn to Revelation 20 and it says, it's a prophetic book, it speaks about the future, it's still going to happen. And the man says, I saw the dead small and great stand before God and the books were opened and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. So there we have God writing our works in his book. So God writes his law on our heart. He writes our works in his book. And it's like a filing cabinet. It's like a record keeping book. It's a ledger. God writes our works in his book. And then it says in verse 15, whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. So the last thing that God, write, that God writes is he can write our names in the book of life. He can write our names in the book of life. Three things, dear friend, that God writes. His law on our hearts, our works in his book, and he can write our names in the book of life. That's just our headings. So the first one is what we would call a conscience. We uh, are not like the animals. That might surprise you today, dear friend. Uh, we live in a society that believes in materialism. Simply put, there is nothing outside of the natural world, the physical world, nothing outside of the material universe. Unless it's a solid or liquid or gas and I can see it and smell it and touch it, it does not exist. But we, from time to time we come across things that uh, don't seem to square with that circle. Uh, we come across reality that seems to rub against the green of our belief system uh, because there are clear things in this world that can't be explained purely by materialism, things like justice, things like the human conscience, things like uh, the information in our DNA. That's all non-physical stuff. Where did that come from? See, a moral law demands a lawgiver. This conscience that we have, this moral compass that everybody on planet Earth has and tells us about objective truth. We all know things to be objectively true. I uh, think we all know not to lie, we all know not to steal, we all know intuitively that it's wrong to commit adultery to take another man's uh, wife, we all know it's wrong to murder, we all know it's wrong to torture, no one's ever taught us these things, we didn't get it from government, we didn't get it from parents, we didn't get it from the state, we didn't get it through uh, experimental means, we didn't, it's not as though we stuck morality in a test tube, one day and said, this is how we get truth. No, no, dear friend, the Bible repeatedly tells us that God is that lawgiver. He is a spirit being, he is an eternal being, and he has inscribed upon our hearts his moral law. We're hardwired to know about God. Uh, he is the invisible God. He is a, a spirit being. He is outside of the material universe, and he has inscribed his law on our hearts. That is the only explanation that we have, and we have it there in the Bible. God has written his law on our hearts. But the problem is, and the difficulty we have with that, dear friend, is it's, it's not that there's a lack of evidence of God, it's just we don't like the evidence. So what we do is we suppress our conscience. We uh, dull our conscience. We harden our hearts against God so that we, we don't want him. Why? Because our conscience, God's written, moral law written on our hearts, convicts us. Our conscience, that moral law, 
is like the nervous system for the physical body. So when we're in pain, the nerves tell the body that something is wrong. Same in the spiritual world. Your conscience tells you that you're away from God. Your conscience tells you that you have broken his law. Every time you lie, every time you look at somebody else and lust after them in your hearts, every time you're unthankful or angry or bitter or self-centered, these are all things uh, that the Bible describes as sins. And we know, we know we have done wrong, and our wrong is against God. Our sins are against God. And instead of uh, repenting of those sins, what we do is double down on our error, and we try and suppress the knowledge of God. Can I ask tonight, is there somebody on the call who is trying to run from God, trying to suppress the knowledge of God? That's what the very first man in the Bible did when he sinned, Adam. He hid from God. Why? Because he didn't want to be accountable. He didn't want, uh, he didn't want some, an authority figure to be over him in judgment. He didn't want to face up to his mistake, and so he hid. I ask tonight on the call, are you hiding from God because of your sin? Are you hiding from God because you have done things wrong, because there's skeletons in the closet, because... You have been convicted by your conscience that you have done things wrong. I wonder today, dear friend, are you running from God? Really, it is the goodness of God. The pain, I know we don't think of it, but pain is, the nervous system that rings in pain is a very good thing. It tells us about danger that's coming or peril. And it's the same with the conscience. It is the kindness of God that we that God tells us when we're wrong. And the Bible says it's the goodness of God that leads us to repentance. It is the kindness of God, dear friend, to tell us when we're wrong and where we're going wrong. Why? Because as I read at the end of the book of the Bible, in the book of Revelation, God writes something else. He has written every work in a book. He has written our works on earth in a book. And that's not very pleasant. Why? Because it's not a ledger of our merits. It's not a ledger of our good deeds. Rather, it is a book that records our sins. You see, dear friend, this is what the Bible teaches. As I've said, we've sinned and there is a day of reckoning. There, there is a day of account. That materialistic worldview or idea that people are hanging on to says... When I die, I'm six foot under. No, no, dear friend. That's like the ostrich sticking his head in the sand trying to deny reality. The Bible says there is a day of account. It is appointed unto man once to die, and after this, the judgment. I want you to consider that tonight, that you are going to stand before a holy God. You are going to meet your maker. The Bible, therefore, says prepare to meet your God. I ask, are you ready to meet him, uh, dear friend? Are you ready to meet God today, because that's what the Bible describes. We are almost on a collision course. We have an appointment. There's no get-out clauses. There's no exemptions. We sometimes think the rules don't apply to us, but everyone is going to stand before God. And unless you get your sins dealt with, dear friend, in this life, here and now, then God is going to present you with that record, the record of your sins, your works are written in a book, not so that God might know them. It's so that on judgment day, they might be presented to you, that the evidence is presented of all the wrong that you have done. I wonder, have you ever considered that? God who knows you through and through. The Bible says all things are open and naked, that is exposed to the eyes of him to whom we will give account. God knows our thoughts, he knows our motives, and he has recorded every sin, every single sin in his book. Why? Because he is a just God. He's not unjust, he's not unfair. Our sins are crimes against him. He is the highest authority in all of the universe, and our sins are like crimes. They are crimes, that's the gravity of them. That's the seriousness of them. Our sins are crimes against heaven, against God, and he has written every work in his book. I, I want you tonight, dear friend, to consider that reality. God, sins that you thought you, that time had erased, sins that you thought you had, you had forgotten about, 
sins that you had brushed under the carpet, sins that you hoped would be wiped clean by good works, every single one of them will be presented in God's judgment hall one day and that, so that you might see that you are guilty. That's what, the, that's what the Bible says. On judgment day before God, every mouth is stopped and all of the world is guilty before him. Again, no, no exceptions. Every sinner will stand guilty. I wonder today, dear friend, do you see yourself in that predicament? Do you see yourself as a guilty sinner? That's not me chastising you. We're interested in God's word. That is God's assessment of us all. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Every mouth is stopped. All the world is guilty. And this is the danger, dear friend. This is why it's, this message is personal. This, why, this is why this message has massive implications for you, eternal implications, is that on judgment day, those works, God's book, God's file of your life will be presented to you and the verdict is guilty and the verdict is condemned. And the guilty, condemned people spend eternity in the lake of fire in a place called hell. That is God's prison house. That's how serious it is, dear friend. That's where your sins are taking you. That's where you will end up for all of eternity. God has written his law on our hearts where without excuse, God will present you with your file so that justice is seen to be done. This is just, this is right, and you will be sentenced to a lost eternity, hell itself. The implication, this is personal defense, you are in danger. The good news is this, I'll get to it now. The good news is that God has no delight in the death of the wicked. The good news for us all tonight on the call is that there is another book, the book of life, the book of life. Even though we're heading for judgment and death, God has provided a way into heaven. That's all you need to do is register in that book. We're well acquainted with this idea. If we go to eat food today, you have to book in advance. If you go to a hotel, you have to put your name in the book. You have to register. If you're going on holiday, you have to make preparation. You have to get your name on the database. You have to register in advance. God has not just a file that condemns, he has a reg registration file. You need to get your name in that book, dear friend. And the good news is you can get your name in the book. Why? Because the Lord Jesus has made preparation. He said one day, I, in my father's house are many mansions, many waiting places, many rooms. And he says, I go to prepare a place for you. So that people can get into heaven today. Preparation has been made for all. It's been made for you, dear friend. Why? Because the Lord Jesus saw us in our need. He came into this world. The Son of God became a man, lived a sinless life, and died on a cross. He died not for his sin. He had none. He could not sin. He died for your sin and for my sin. Those sins that will condemn us in a future day, those sins that demand judgment and justice, he satisfied the requirement of God's justice. We couldn't do it. We couldn't work off the debt. Time couldn't erase our sins. There had to be a sacrifice. There had to be bloodshed. And that's what took place at the cross. The Lord Jesus paid our fine. He offered himself without spot to God. He satisfied the requirements of justice. And so the work has been done and God offers you today to register for heaven. He offers you today, dear friend, a place in heaven itself. Listen again to the words of the Lord Jesus. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go and prepare a place for you. He has done the work. He has prepared the way. He, he says somewhere else, the Lord Jesus, I am the door, one way into heaven. By me, if any man enter in, he will be saved. He has done the work. He has made the preparation. There is room for all in heaven today. That's all you need to do, dear friend, is register. Get your name in the book of life. You ask me, how can it be done, How? How can I register in the book of life? How is it that the file with all my sins can be uh, 
thrown out of court? How is it that the file with all my sins can be completely erased? How can I be acquitted and get my name in the book of life? The Bible simply says, repent of your sin and believe in the Lord Jesus. This is heaven's registration process. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. You won't be put on hold. You won't be diverted. There's no bureaucracy. This is God's offer to all. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. You will be saved and your name will be registered in the Lamb's Book of Life. Never to be erased. Never to be wiped away. But it will guarantee you an entry into heaven. That's how simple it is, dear friend. Simply believe on the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. Whoever's name is in the book of life will have eternal life. Thanks for your time. Thanks for listening. Diolch am fawr. Diolch am amino gyda ni. A pob bendith.